Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Carter from Wageningen University and I'm going to talk about R&D needs for Red Plus and forest monitoring. And our work on this topic has been done under the Red Copernicus project, which is part of the European Union's Earth Observation Programme Copernicus. This um, offers a number of services, firstly satellite data, um, the Sentinel satellites and also related to this product, which can support monitoring, um, for example, in the context of atmosphere, land, climate change, and so on. And this information is freely and openly accessible. Europe already has a number of ways in which it's supporting reduced deforestation. And one of those is through the Horizon 2020 program which supports a number of projects, including the Red Copernicus project. And the Red Copernicus project is organized in a consortium led by GAF um, from Germany and Wageningen University is one of the partners. And as I mentioned, it's received funding through European Union's Horizon 2020 project program. So the Copernicus Red project um, has the aim to design a potential end-to-end -end system providing both core and downstream services for Red Plus. And this is done through coordination with a number of relevant stakeholders, international agencies, research and the private sector. And following this, once the service has been designed, the aim is to spend some time identifying remaining research gaps which the service doesn't yet address, which could be addressed in the future. So to clarify some of the concepts here, the core service is these generic global or pantropical, for example, products which are provided um, and can be used by all countries. Adapting these towards national circumstances or based on specific user requirements would be considered a downstream service and that also would include capacity building related to promoting correct use of these core products. And both of these uh, core and downstream applications would provide benefits for forest and so I'm going to talk a bit more later about how the core service was designed, but basically um, several earth observation concepts were selected which are relevant for tropical forest monitoring, including Red Plus. And these are earth observation data, forest status maps, forest change maps, near real time information, and tools to um, use and process and analyze the data. And based on these concepts, some potential core products have been proposed. Um, and you can see these on this slide here. So moving forward to the main aim of this presentation, which is to define R&D gaps for forest monitoring, particularly in the context of RED. Well, in the context of this project, we define that those R&D gaps as the difference between what users and policies need and what is available and is operational and ultimately can be or is going to be integrated as part of a potential service component. So first I'll discuss how we defined what users and policies need. And this was also input into um, defining what was going to be part of the service component. So to start with user requirements, we looked at the policy needs and many of these stem from the climate reporting requirements, for example, under the context of the UNFCCC. Um, but of course, there are a number of other reasons for needing to monitor um, forests, including the sustainable development goals, local forest and land management purposes, and of course, European regulations. And related to those policy needs um, for climate reporting purposes, this figure aims to just give a bit of an impression of the um, 
amount of reporting and the frequency as well of which is required by countries and there are a number of things that countries have to report for um, for example the biannual reporting um, and also every five years for the glo global stock take so this is quite a an onerous task for a number of countries um, which um, the potential proposed service can support and also for designing policies, um, including national policies, information on forests can be very useful. Um, and this information can feed into defining the problem, identifying options and policies, implementing and then evaluating the policies. And a number of stakeholder groups were consulted as part of this user requirements, including the European Commission itself, donors, red countries, research community, initial, international initiatives and NGOs and the private sector. We also utilised existing data sources for the user requirements, including information through networks such as Goffsey Golden Global Forest Observations Initiative, an online survey on um, greenhouse gas emissions and reporting, um, and then as part of this project, we did a dedicated stakeholder survey and we held a stakeholder workshop. At the stakeholder consultation workshop, all the stakeholder groups were well represented and we were able to discuss findings from the, the policy review and also from the survey and so on, and to discuss some of the user needs in more detail. So the user requirements uh, study identified a number of data priorities which we discussed during the workshop and um, in addition to that the type of service um, that would be provided was discussed and this could be summarized by a long-term easy to access and open set of products and services. So transparent open data should be um, part of it. Core products should be ready for immediate needs, although there should be flexibility in terms of tools and so on related to the, the need to adapt products to national definitions and circumstances. Documentation would be provided and there should be, of course, some user engagement and capacity building throughout. So based on these user and policy needs, particularly for the data, we explored what was available and was operational and could be potentially part of a service. We used an application or technology readiness levels approach to define whether concepts, so whether data and tools, etc., were operational or not and ready to go into a, such a service. And we used the CALM framework for this which is developed specifically for the assessment of red plus concepts and it rates them on a, mature, a level uh, of one to nine in terms of levels of maturity. And we had a, an open survey where people could um, assess the product that they developed or were part of um, developing. And this table shows some of the data and products that we assessed there according to three different categories in this slide and there's two more categories in the data products we also looked at methods and tools and they were assessed here and then also available platforms for accessing and manipulating data and lastly in terms of the definition of the r d gaps we looked at what could be integrated as part of a so we looked at these concepts which had been selected for part of the um, potential service component in the context of what would be provided. So building on the foundation which I just explained, we started our R&D assessment and we first looked at existing sources of information on R&D needs. We did a scientific literature review. We then used a systematic approach to assess or rank the priorities, the research priorities, and then we discussed these findings at an R&D workshop. So we started with synthesizing findings from existing sources on R&D 
community needs and based on the stakeholder assessment and also the assessment of um, products in terms of their operationality, we identified a number of data sources which are not yet considered operational and which would be uh, potential R&D topics. So these include, for example, biomass change maps, um, which are not readily available. There were also some methodological R&D gaps, such as um, guidance on uncertainty and accuracy assessments, and for platforms, a kind of one-stop shop where all data, relevant data, could be accessed and analysed together with the support and capacity building materials there. And from our CARM assessment, we used um, a detailed survey to capture information in order to do this assessment of maturity of products. And we asked the capacity development developers what the um, main barrier was that was stopping their product or data or method, for example, from becoming operational. And in many cases, the, the data are there, the analysis method is, is ready, the pre-processing is there, but it's actually the um, country uptake which is missing. And from the capacity assessment, so the assessment that we did using CALM framework, we identified a number of concepts which were not achieving operationality according to this framework. And these are listed in this table. We reviewed um, some information from the UNFCCC technical assessment process where they assess the information which is provided by countries when reporting under this framework. And a number of barriers to good reporting were listed. So these were also considered research gaps, a potential research. The GFOI did a country needs assessment and um, they looked at uh, gaps in the tropical forest monitoring systems and integration of data was one gap, but uncertainty analysis and area estimation were the second two gaps. So these gaps were also taken up in our assessment. And just to show you that these gaps were not uh, systematic across countries, so we, we looked at variations across the tropics. We also did a scientific literature review looking at um, research challenges, and this was published recently in a journal article. Based on some keywords and search criteria, including remote sensing, deforestation, forest monitoring. We identified papers which addressed forest monitoring in the 25 countries with the most tropical forest, which were published between 2018 and 2020, either in Scopus or in relevant conferences. The number of forest monitoring studies published were captured in the literature review, and the panel on the top shows studies with a global or pantropical scope, and the one in the uh, panel below shows studies which were either performed in one country or in a very small region, for example, with adjacent countries. And you can see that the number of studies is not distributed equally across the trop tropics, with a number of countries and forest types being more the focus of research than others. The study looked at the type of research which was being done and we found that activity data and land use and land management focused studies were the most common with near real time and analysis ready type data being the least focused on. The sensors which were used in the studies was also captured and you can see that Landsat, Sentinel, other satellites and also multi-sensor images were used but the use of this across the tropics really varies as well. And finally, we captured information on the affiliation of the first author from all the papers. And we found that in many cases, the first author was not from the country in which the study was carried out. Um, so you can see here that there were a few countries where there were many authors who did author a study from their country, for example, Brazil, India really stand out. And there are some countries where the, there was no studies 
where the first author was from that country itself. This can be seen as a research gap stimulating um, researchers from the tropical countries themselves to at least be the, the first author of a paper, although of course they could have been co-authors on these papers. So finally, using all the information which I discussed, we were able to rank the priority of some of these research, potential research topics. We considered the relevance for RED, so this was based on the policy analysis, the stakeholder needs, which was based on the user needs analysis. We also evaluated the amount of research which is available, which was based on the literature review I just discussed, and then whether it was part of the proposed service. So based on the criteria which I just outlined in the table in the slide before, it's possible to come up with a list of research priorities. And these are on the slide here, some methodological issues and also some data issues. So we held a workshop to discuss some of these priorities which had been identified using our study and also to get some new insights from um, other stakeholders. The R&D workshop was held in June of this year, 2021, and it was attended by uh, more than 200 people. And the slide just shows some of the tropical countries which are represented by the participants. And all the participants were engaged in identifying these research priorities. So we started with some initial ideas from the, the floor and some of the things which had been discussed in, in our literature review, for example, popped up, but also some other things um, such as capacity building, again, coming back from the user needs, popped up again. We divided the workshop into several key topics, including biomass, degradation and regrowth, early warning, uncertainty assessment, and land use and greenhouse gases. And we invited experts to lead discussions on these topics to identify R&D needs, and they came up with the top three research priorities um, during these discussion sessions. And in addition to these um, thematic sessions, we also came up with other um, R&D needs, and some of these were related to methods to identify um, R&D needs more systematically. Um, the capacity building came up again. Um, some themes related to different forest or ecosystem types, for example, dry forests and wetlands came up, um, specific data, use of specific data came up, for example, Sentinel-2 data, um, and also high resolution data came up again. So what I showed you are the kind of raw data that came out of that workshop in the last two slides, and we still have to analyze those, and the aim is to um, keep looking at those, to go back to the scientific literature, make sure we don't miss any other recent scientific developments. We have a special issue in the Remote Sensing Journal where we're also um, asking authors to contribute their research with a specific call to topical country-led papers. And um, of course, the feedback from this session will be incorporated. After all this, we hope to come up with a list in order of priority of R&D topics for tropical forest monitoring. So thank you for your attention.